all but a week of the trimester at this point. Uh, okay, so the third part for complex number operations. What, you guys didn't even take out your paper and stuff yet? We gotta be students too. Sometimes even if you don't feel like it, go through the motions and it helps you actually get back into it. That's what you learn as an adult. It's not like adults want to go to work every day, but they do. And then when they do, then they remember that it's okay. So the third part is division, which sounds kind of horrible. Like, like when, you, when you get the equations, it would be something like 2 plus 3i divided by 4 minus 7i, right? And it, it sounds like it would be really rough. Like multiplication wasn't bad at all. You, you just kind of foil the things out. Division ends up being multiplication. It doesn't seem like it should be, but that's how you do the division with complex numbers. So here's a fully worked out problem so you can see what it looks like, and then we're going to do some together. So 5 plus i over 2 minus 4i. <clears throat> and then you'll see you multiply it by the conjugate pair on top and bottom, which seems like it should do nothing. Um, but it gives you the answer is a single thing. And that's what we're looking for. The whole point of division is so that when you take the top divided by the bottom, you get a single answer. And by us doing this, you get a single answer. Scroll down, I suppose. I forget, how many people had a graphing calculator in here? Was it like half or a third or something like that? Okay, okay. I'll show you how to use your graphing calculator in a little bit too. gone. Tracy, since I keep forgetting to put you as the number system, do you want to be two for today? Do you want to roll? Do you want to call on people? Excellent. Thank you. Which number did we get? One. One? Sean. Now, I'll let you finish writing, too. But I'll call on you first. It's not that bad. Are you done writing? Yeah. Oh, OK, excellent. So you see how I have 2 plus 4i written in purple on next to the original problem? So the original problem in black. How did I choose 2 plus 4i? Where did I get that from, do you think? Perfect. It's the conjugate pair of the bottom. The bottom is what you focus on. You're going to multiply by the conjugate pair, which just means you change the symbol on the i. Now, maybe you don't recognize it. Maybe you do. Is that the one on the under the 5 plus i? So yes. Okay. Yep. Oops. 
right there. That's what you, that's what you focus on, because the original problem is 5 plus i divided by 2 minus 4i. And then what you choose, what you're going to multiply top and bottom by, is the conjugate pair of the bottom. So what I've got the red asterisk on. Yes, sir? So if it was 2 plus 4i, it would be 2 minus 4i times 5 plus i. Or it, would it always be positive? By positive, do you mean this plus sign? Yeah. No. It, this is going to be the opposite of whatever's over here. Yeah, I forget. Yep. Um, I'm sure we're going to have some that this is a plus, and then so you'd multiply by minus. Yep. So the, the 2 minus 4i, the 2 plus 4i, you're going to FOIL it out. And if you FOIL it out correctly, the middle terms should cancel because this is a difference of squares. That's why we purposely choose these numbers. So 2 times 2 gives you the 4. 2 plus 4i is plus 8i, minus 8i cancels, minus 16i squared. And then this is what we did Friday, is any time you have an i squared, you turn it to a negative 1. So that's what was down here. Now the numerator, we actually don't care what that turns into. The numerator can turn into whatever, but you FOIL it up. And I, I think you guys are, it seemed like you guys were really, really good at that on Friday. So you FOIL out the top, same thing, you're going to get an i squared, so you change that to a negative 1. So that's what this is. By us purposely picking this bottom information, the bottom is no longer imaginary. Like that's the whole goal of what we're trying to do, actually. So the top turned out to be 6 plus 22i, the bottom turned out to be 20. To make it a single normal answer, we're going to separate the fraction with the first thing, whatever this symbol is, and then the second thing. And that's where that, well, look at that. I made it hard. Isn't that, that's such a lovely morning morning. It's so cute. Yeah, it is. That's, that's for Mondays. I heart Mondays. Yeah. No, I heart Fridays. Not this class, though. Wow. Wow. Oh, Aaron, you're so truthful. And then you reduce it if you can. Yeah, what were we trying to ask? Okay, so for when you have that 10 plus 20i, like the one up there, are you foiling the top and then just multiplying, or sorry, with the original equation, are you foiling the top numbers and I, then not foiling the bottom? I foiled the top okay. and I got this. Yep. I foiled the bottom and then you combine I got this. Oh, so you already did the combining? Yes. Okay. So the middle terms cancel, plus 8i minus 8i. Yeah, so it, there's nothing wrong with you writing it out all the way, like foiling it completely. Yeah. So because I knew it was a difference of squares, I knew the middle term canceled. But if you don't recognize that, it's fine. It'll still work out exactly the same. Okay, cool. Yeah. But that, this is kind of how you choose to do the things. Now, here's the part that, you know, I don't know if I should show you or not, but I'm going to. Once it opens up. Yes. Yep. Those with the graph and calculator, let me make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Those with the graph and calculator, you can put it in the complex mode. I know I told you that. Um, I think when we started square roots, I think that's when I showed you guys that. Put your phone away. Go down to A plus BI. Now, by doing that, anything I type in the calculator, it's going to recognize what's going on. So I'm going to do a fraction, which, remember, if I hit the green button and y equals, I can do a fraction. Although, you don't need a fraction to do this. You can just type divide. But on the top of the fraction, I'm going to put 5 plus i. Oh, my eyes are not good. Where is i? There's a little i somewhere. Here it is, above the period above the decimal point. So 5 plus i divided by 2 minus 4i. And if we did the problem right, what did we get? We had um, three, 3 tenths? No. 3 yeah. over 10 plus 11. <coughs> yeah. 3 over 10 plus 11 over 10i. 
the calculator should tell us either 0.3 plus 1.1i or 3 to, you know, it, I, can, I don't remember if it's going to make it a fraction or not. It does do a fraction. I bet you if I type it like this, I bet you if I type it as 5 plus i divided by 2 minus 4i, it'll probably give me the answer in a decimal. But because I used the fraction button, it probably knew I wanted a fraction answer. Yeah. Can we use this on the test? No, because on the test, you can only use a scientific calculator. That's the only reason I'm showing it to you now. Uh, otherwise, I definitely would have showed this to you after the test. On the second part of the test, you can use a graphing calculator, but that's not, um, I, that doesn't have imaginary numbers as part of the problems. But yeah, if nothing, I thought this is, this is a, the only reason I'm showing this to you is because this is a really fast way to check your answers. It's quite a bit faster than you taking a picture of the, the textbook and then opening up your phone to look at the answer key. And I mean, not that that's slow, but like this is a really easy way for you to check your work. Uh, even if you do get a decimal answer, you guys can convert it to fraction probably. I haven't, I haven't tried this, but uh, the very first thing says convert to fraction. Yeah, I figured it would work. Did you guys know that about the calculator? You can make up fractions with that button? No. Use, you guys, if you have a graphing calculator, you've got to learn how to use it. It's got lots of stuff in it. Okay, well, let's put this way. How, how was this problem? Weird. It, it is weird. There's, that's an accurate way to describe it. Um, it doesn't seem like division at all, even though that's what they're considered. Okay, let's, let's, do you guys think you could try this one on your own? No, could we start it together and then you finish it on your own probably? What, let's try that. Tracy, let's roll somebody. 16. 16. Hadley. <laughs> all the time. Get rolled all the time. What am I going to multiply top and bottom by? to divide. So you focus on the bottom, and then you multiply by the conjugate pair. Do you remember how to do the conjugate pair? Uh, no. So the conjugate pair means the only thing you're going to do is change this symbol in the middle. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 5 plus 2i. Thanks. Hey, Tracy, I, I can kind of tell that you guys want to do this one together, so that's okay. Who's going to help us multiply out the bottom? Or I guess the top, doesn't matter. Yeah, go ahead and roll. 27. 27, Zach. Your choice, top or bottom? Uh, top. Top, excellent. Yes, you do. We're going to FOIL 3 plus i times 5 plus 2i. Right. So... I know you know how to do it. 3, 2... So first... 3 times 5. Yep. Which is 15. Yep. Plus... I don't know if it's plus yet, but yeah. Five. Oh, it's going to be. Yeah, you're right. They're five all plus. Times five. Um, okay, so the, you did the insides next, which is fine. i times 5 is going to be 5i. So you did firsts, you did insides. Now what would you do next? It, you don't have to go by the order. Like foil doesn't have to be in order. So you, you did both things times the five. Now you're going to do both things times the... Both things times the two i. Yep. So three times two i is six i. Excellent. And then i times two i is two i squared. Perfect. Perfect. Told you, you knew how to do it. You just didn't, you just weren't confident in it. That's okay. Not being confident isn't bad. It just, it makes you feel like you don't know how to do it. But I did do it. Yes. Okay, Tracy, somebody's gonna help me multiply at the bottom. Three. Three is Jake. Jake, can you help me foil out the bottom? Okay. You got this. 
25. <laughs> right intentions, though. Okay. So you did outsides, it looks like. Okay, so you did 5 times 5, 5 times 2i. Now, uh, the next would be the negative 2i times both things. Good. Excellent. It, it's actually really easy to forget that negative sign, but it's negative 4i squared. Good. Very good. Okay, Tracy, there's not much more to these problems. I mean, like, they're, they're not super fast, but they're not. Yes, go ahead. Um, do we know that it's a negative, like, because the. Then this was a negative 2i. Okay. So if, if that were a positive, it would be positive, and the other one would be negative, would it also be negative? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, Tracy, who did you get? Nine. Nine? Nine is Grant. Uh, anything we can do from there? Combine the eyes. Combine the eyes. Okay, we can do that. So 15 plus 11i, because 5 and 6, plus 2i squared, 25 cancels i's, minus 4i squared. Okay, Tracy? 30. Monica. Anything up there that you can think of to do? If you can remember from Friday, this was kind of pretty much the big part of Friday. What happens when you get I squared? Um, it becomes uh, negative 1. Yeah, good. So we've got I squared in a couple spots that becomes a negative one, and it'll be multiplied times whatever's there. So let me write this again. So 15 plus 11i minus two over 25. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So on top, I've got plus two times the negative one that you just told me it equals. Oh, you just did a Multiplied them, yep. So I've got 13 plus 11i over 29. And then Tracy, one more person that goes last. Twenty one. Twenty-one is oh she's gone. <laughs> Alexandra's not here. Thirty-five? Thir we don't have that. We only go to thirty-one in this hour. There's, there's like six extra balls in there for this class. 18. 18. We definitely have that, Liam. Uh, anything else I could do? Okay. Um, what you said isn't wrong, but what the way you're going to want to write it is do 1129 separate and then the i after if you write 11 i on the top it is correct but this is this is generally how you, they'll want it written so i wouldn't mark you wrong if you wrote that but very good so the answer obviously is terrible i mean it's like it's not a good answer um but it is a single number it's a single complex number and if we divide the first two that's what we wanted okay only one more our room is getting super hot, isn't it? That's not helping us stay, get awake. We need cold. We're from Minnesota. This is what we need cold. Six. Six. Excellent. They don't even know the question yet. I like it. Well, Hank, I know you kind of came in the middle of it, so that's a little rough, but I'll, I'll phrase the question so that it has nothing, like even if you're not sure what to do, that shouldn't matter. Okay, so here's the next division question. Three plus seven I over eight I. Um, I don't know if you caught on the way we do the division, Hank. Um, we multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate pair. What would be the conjugate pair of 8i? Uh, Perfect. Very nice. Good memory. 
I put this one here because I thought it may kind of throw some of you off because it doesn't have a regular number. So on conjugate pairs, the only thing you change is the symbol on the imaginary number. Why don't you guys try to finish this one on your own? I'll give you a couple minutes, see if you can get the final answer, and then we'll, uh, we'll call on people. Victoria, you didn't eat enough of your chocolate blueberries. They're supposed to give you some energy, even if it's short term. Here's the cure. You wake up at 6 o'clock. So then, then by 7.30, you're semi-awake. I usually wake up. Really? I don't even wake up. Oh, I'm impressive. Most students don't like doing that. All right, Tracy, who's going to help me with this one? Aaron. Do you think you could help me multiply out the top or the bottom? Bottom is technically the easiest one. Negative 64. Squared, but yes. Bottom. Squared. What you said was correct. I don't know if you just forgot to say the squared or whatever, but yes. Um, so the bottom was nice and easy to multiply out. Who's going to help me with multiply out the top? Thirty-four. We don't have that one. Eleven. Ava. Very nice. This one, this one goes by quicker probably because, you, as you guys know, it's not actually foiling. You're just multiplying one thing. Okay. Um, the next step would be to combine anything we can. This one doesn't have anything to combine, but we do have i squares. Uh, trying to look for sleepy people. David. What do we do with the i squared? It's going to become negative one. Nice. OK, Tracy, last person who's going to finish it out for us. 14. 14, which is Maya. And that's done? And then you have to do, you have to set up a subtraction, like negative 24 over. Why did I put the 56 first? But you're right. Because it's not I? Correct. The regular number goes first. And then I is at the end. Yep. Nice. And I know this reduces, so what is that? 28 over 32. And that's 14 over 16, 7 over 8. Okay, so that's 7 over 8. I suppose I could have recognized that 8 went into both, but I'm going to pretend I'm like a student and I didn't realize that. If on the test I just wrote 56 over 64 minus, like the original answer, and it reduced it, would I get a point problem? Yeah, because you've got a calculator. <laughs> 6 over 16, 3 over 8. 
Go ahead, Monica. Yeah. How did it that your 24 becomes odd? I didn't. This minus. So I could write, if you wanted to, you could write plus negative 24. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it didn't. I just, it looks cleaner with the minus sign instead of plus. Um, but yeah, you, that, that wouldn't be wrong at all. Nope. Okay, why? It's also not wrong if you write the I first. Okay. I, I'm just trying to write it in the yeah. more correct form. But like, why? if what you guys do is correct, I'm not going to mark it wrong. Go ahead. Sorry. Why can't 56 over 64 be black? <clears throat> it can. That's what I was just saying. Oh, it doesn't matter that that's correct. This is the correct form, like proper form. Mm -hmm. But it's not wrong if you kept like the original problem. Yeah. If you separated the original problem, that's fine too. I wouldn't mark that wrong. Okay. Yeah. You know how when we were finding the conjugate pairs, yep. we would like add a number in front of it if it's just the i. If, it helps uh, if you wanted to, you could write 0 plus 8a like that. Yeah, you can do that. So it has to be 0, it can't be 1. Correct, you can't just put a different number. Yeah. Because 1 is worth something. But you can put the zero because it's not worth anything and it wouldn't change the value of the problem. That's it for all of division. None of these sections were very big, but they were all kind of time consuming. And if we tried to do them over a day or two, it would have been a real mad rush to try to cram it all in. And I, I didn't think you had that in you at the end of the trimester. I know you guys are getting to the point where you need some time off to recuperate mentally. And that's kind of what thinking my breaks for. You guys get five days off then. That'll help. That's really good. Wait, um, are we taking breaks five days? Yeah, you guys have the Wednesday off as well. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, teachers don't, but you do. What? Come back to the 29th. No, next. Uh, 23rd is your last day. You come back on the 29th. The month, yeah, but you come back that Monday. Okay, here's your homework. It's just six questions. Uh, again, like I'm not trying to give you a lot. I'm not trying to make this so you have to take it home. This is just so you to work it on here so you remember things. Tomorrow I'll give you the assignment for in class. And then we're going to start reviewing on Wednesday.